Welcome back to the workshop everybody. Your good friend Walter here. I've been planing away at this piece of black cherry. It's quarter sawn, which means the growth rings are perpendicular, 90 degrees, to the face of the board. Here's the outside of the tree, here's the inside of the tree. It's very stable wood. It offers up some very unique grain patterns because the ray fleck, the uh, medullary rays come through. Medullary. Now, this side went pretty easy. Not much tear out at all. Smooth, ready to finish. This side, we've got areas here which were adjacent to a knot. You can see it gets, there's a feathering here. And there was one, there's one here too. And you can actually see it here and it will be, remain open there. There will be tear out there. So, I just about finished this side, it's close. I started with my single blade jack, but I got a lot of tear out. Then I went to the single blade smoother. Still, there was some tear out that remained. So now I'm finishing up with regular blades with chip rakers. trying to get that high spot out. There was a high spot. Yep. Over here. So another reason for today's episode is the question, why woodworking? Why do we like woodworking? Well, for me, it started at a young age. I wanted to be in the, sh in the workshop with, when my dad was around, when he wasn't working. And one way to do that was to ask permission to use his carpentry tools. And so, I got bit by the bug. I still have my first project. Maybe one day I'll bring it down from the house. It's a checkerboard. And it's still held together even though, <laughs> thinking back, I used the absolutely wrong glue. But it's still together. Dad got me the glue. Wherever he got it from said it would work. But why woodworking? There we go. Done now. So what about tear out? There's some tear out in here. You can hear it. See how the pencil, when the pencil hits the tear out, makes a different sound. Here's where you have to have a sharp blade and a finely set chip breaker. A fine cut. That may be too thick. We'll give it one pass. So, my life just kept going that way. I apprenticed in cabinet making shop. I, I loved it. Had to do a lot of things I didn't like, like putting hardware on cabinets. Going out on deliveries to deliver cabinets had nothing to do with woodworking, but it's what you did when you were an apprentice. Whatever the boss said. Okay, we're getting there. So I went off to college, got my design degree. That took me in a lot of different directions. But to make a long story short, what I guess I'd like to talk about is can you make money with hand tool woodworking? Well the answer is yes you can make money. Are you going to be able to make a hundred cabinets in a week? No. Are you going to be able to put food on the table? Yes. Are you going to live in a mansion? No. 
Will you have a roof over your head? Yes. Clothes on your back? Yes. Raise your children? Yes. Will you have to diversify? Yes. In fact, I went completely away from woodworking one winter, well, actually it was spring, because one winter I got so sick from breathing in sanding dust and lacquer fumes that I nearly died. I caught pneumonia and was out of commission for weeks. So, got out of woodworking that winter. Nearly starved. Hung on though. And in the spring, I went to work with a friend of mine as a landscaper. Actually as a grunt, but that's besides the point. I had to feed my family. Loved the work. Absolutely loved the work. Outside, sweating, digging, planting. Loved it. Because gardening is my second passion. Woodworking is number one. Gardening, especially planting trees. I put back trees wherever I go. In every state I've lived, I put back trees. But as winter was approaching, landscaping was going to come to an end. So he and I discussed this and lo and behold, there was an opening in a company for a salesman, indoors, climate control, no dust. I interviewed, they hired me on the spot. Three years into that, I would do my woodworking on the side, just lightly, just a few pieces for family and friends. And I started going back to hand tool woodworking. Well, Y2K was coming. I was their number one salesman, sold every, every computer I possibly could. There we go, tear out's almost gone there. I'd say it's virtually gone. Are we still flat? Hurt near. And so I resigned and decided I was going to buy and sell wood. I had a place near me that was selling seconds. I would buy the seconds, cut out the defects, sell a mail order. And that worked really well. I was doing something I liked, but I wasn't breathing the fine dusts and the lack of fumes and everything else. So I was back into woodworking to some degree. Well, lo and behold, unbeknownst to me, somebody else had different plans. Someone asked me if I could make a baseball bat. Hmm. 12 years and 110,000 bats later, I had worked my way up through different machines, different lathes, to a CNC lathe costing $110,000. And now I needed surgery because I couldn't stand at the machines anymore. My hip had to be replaced. So I had to make a decision. Life is like that, it's about choices. So I sold the business, the machinery, the lumber, and had my surgery successfully, and reinvested the money in new cabinet making machinery, figuring I'd come back gangbusters. Well, here we are, Five years after that, and there was no way I would ever get that business back off the ground. So all the machines are now gone again. And I'm teaching you about handwork. Why? These machines, these tools, will never become redundant. Your knowledge will never become redundant. Your skill will never become redundant. You can take it with you everywhere, no matter if you're professional or hobbyist.
You see that? What was once tear out in here is now smooth. Over here. Now it's not as smooth as glass like in here, but it's smooth. So why woodworking? Well, you have to ask yourself why woodworking for you. Is it a release? You know, you get a piece of wood like this, you sharpen your tools, and even if you go nice and slow, just to watch those shavings peel off. And to let the cares of the day, let the cares of the day just slip you by, just pass you by. No television. No computer, I have no radio, I have no internet, nothing in my workshop. I won't have it. One day I might have my, my old stereo out here with my records. But I don't have a need for it. Why? My wood is talking to me. It's telling me. Walter, you got to skew the plane here. See that? You have to skew the plane over the irregular wood so you're going to get a nice smooth surface. Walter, you need to pull the chips out of your plane so that you don't clog. You get feedback. That's about it. Why woodworking? You have to decide that. Quarter sawn cherry. Look at the look at the grain in there. Can you see that? I gotta show you that. That's just pretty. It's just alcohol. That's another thing, I don't like a lot of petroleum products in my workshop. Look at the grain in there. Can you see that? I hope you can. Isn't that beautiful? And cherry will get darker. It'll get dark like this and darker over time, especially if you put some sort of an oil finish on there. But if you need to Make lots of money and, and feed your family. You're going to have to do whatever you have to do. If you have a job that pays the bills, take good care of that job. And do your woodworking as a hobby. Get away from the computers, the cell phones, and, and the radios, and all the other stuff. Go and make shavings. Uh, do small boxes for people as uh, keepsakes. Uh, if you like wood turning, get into wood turning. I mean, you want, you want a, a, a hobby that'll take you away from the world. It's like planing, except the machine is rotating and all you have to do is take the tool and turn it a certain way and the shavings fly 12, 15 feet across the room. Man, there's no better distraction from the world than working a craft and making something. It's, it's inside of us. And then once you've made something, Part of you is in that. It becomes part of that object. You give that object to somebody, whether you sell it to them or whether you give it to them as a gift. If they saw you working in your workshop, they'll have a connection to you. You don't get that with Ikea. You don't get that with Walmart. You don't get that with any, any mass-produced item. Yeah, people were employed, but all they are are machine operators. They're robots. If you handcraft something, and even it's cooking a meal for somebody, or even driving them somewhere, that's a, a service you're providing to them, you're giving them a piece of yourself. That's what life is all about. And you have choices to make. I mean, you go out and buy tools, and then three, six months down the road, you ask yourself, why did I buy that? or a year, two years pass, and for some reason you didn't use that tool. Do you hang on to that tool or do you sell it? 
Heck, I, a lot of you know I have sold hundreds of hand planes in the last four years. And I have more to sell. Why? You pick one up here for five bucks, you pick one up here for ten, you pick, and you tuck them in boxes and they sit there for 30 years. Until you wake up one day and realize that time is not coming back. It's time to give the information, the tools, and everything to the next generation. I had a blast being here with you today. I hope you did. If you found anything at all educational, give me a thumbs up. If you found it entertaining, give me a thumbs up. Hope you subscribe to the channel because we'll be doing more of these. This is sort of like a fireside chat. And uh, head out to your shop. Go make some shavings. Walter out. <laughs>